I remember when I was in high school, I had to write a, a I had to write a poem for an assignment, and so I was up on I was up in front of the class, and so I was sharing the assignment with everybody. I was sharing the poem, and a couple of people came up to me afterwards, and, uh, and they said, "Wow, Ben, that that really blessed me. That was a really good poem. You should send that in. Maybe get that published." And I was like, "I, I don't." I don't know about that, like, but all right, I'll send it in. So I sent it in and it, lo and behold, it got published. And it is able to bless other people just how they bless other people in that class. We all have a creative side. That's why we want to invite you to be a part of this community art night. Whether you enjoy teaching, leading, or performing, uh, we, want, we want you to be a part of this so you can bless other people. So we have community art night coming up October 22nd. We look forward to seeing you there. Well, good morning, church. Go ahead and stand. We get to worship with one another this morning. We get to just use our voices, clap our hands, lift our hands. It's, it's going to be so much fun.
This week, I had this really sweet reminder from the Lord. Um, this is just a really busy season for my life. <laughs> and I found myself being in a place of, of just feeling like there's so much chaos. And I find myself trying to control every little piece of it and really working myself up into like a frenzy over it because I can't actually control everything, but I think I can. And I had this really sweet moment where the Lord was like, hey, Jess, let me be God. Like you are not built <laughs> to handle all the things. You're not, you're not made to control everything, but I am. And so let me be God. And will you just be my daughter? Will you just, would you just kind of like encounter me and rest in my grace and my love for you? And it was a really, really good reminder for me that we serve a God who always has a way. We serve a God who loves us so much and can handle every part of our lives. And we as his children get to, we just get that from him. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to check off a bunch of, uh, like a, a list of things for him to go, okay, great, now I can give this. No, he loves us so much that we just get his presence. We get his love. We get everything that he is. And we get to bring all of that into our worship. We get to respond to him in our worship. And so as we continue to worship, as we continue to do that, as we continue to just encounter the Lord this morning, I invite you to come to a place of saying, God, you are God, I am human. And I'm gonna let you be God.
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Come on, would you sing that? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Come on, we're gonna declare that this morning.
so much, Father, that we get to gather every week and we get to declare how wonderful, how beautiful, how powerful that you are. God, we just submit to you this morning. We keep our eyes on you, Father. We listen intently for your voice. So would you move among us this morning, God? In your precious name, we all said, amen. Amen. Well, would you all take a few minutes, say hello to one another. Someone in the front, find somebody in the back. All right, all right. Good morning, Well Community. Good morning. All right, it's good to see you all this morning. My name is Ben. My name is Carrie Ann. And we're, we're so glad to see you all this morning. Yeah, we got some hype in here. All right. All right, so if, this is, uh, if you're new here, this is your first time, you're joining us online. 
uh, we want to encourage you to click on the link in the chat. This is just a great way for us to gain to know you, but also letting you know all things happening here at The Well. Uh, also, uh, we have a welcome card in the back of the seat in front of you. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you can fill that out and take it over to the welcome table after the service. Uh, you can get your free gift, and also we can just be able to connect with you as well. Also, on the back of the welcome card, we have a prayer request. Uh, so we just want to invite you, if you have any prayer requests, fill this out. You can drop it off in, at the joy box, the entrance of the sanctuary. Uh, and the team here prays over this every week. Uh, so, yeah, feel free to drop that off in the joy box in the back. And we wanted to remind you that this Saturday we have an event that we want to invite you to. So this Saturday, October 22nd, from 6 to 8.30 p.m., we have our community art night right yes. here at the well. Yeah, so that's really exciting. Uh, so we want to encourage you to invite your family, your friends, your community around you, your neighbors, uh, to be a part of this. Uh, this is a, that's what the church is for. We are a community, uh, and we are just better together in general. Um, but also, uh, this today is actually the last day to sign up uh, if you want to lead a workshop, be a part of the open mic, and even enter an art piece in the gallery. Yes, and this is a family-friendly event where we get to see art, we get to be in a community with art and hear art, so we're, we can't wait to see you this Saturday from 6 to 8.30 p.m. All right, and speaking of events, we have our church picnic today. Woo! Yeah, we got a party in the park, so this will be exciting. Uh, so this is actually happening at noon today. Uh, there are maps in the back. So they should be all in the seats that you are sitting on. Hopefully you didn't sit on one. Um, if not, stand up for a hot second. But yeah, so we have maps on the back here. This is going to be at Westgate Park. So this is happening at noon. This is potluck style. So whether you are a chef or Chef Boyardine, yes. bring your dishes. It'll be a great time. And I'd like to invite everyone to come to Apostle Worship with our tithes and offerings. <laughs> so when we give, we are being generous. And when we are generous, we are reflecting God's character and receiving His joy in our lives. So when we tithe, we are giving 10% of our total income to our home church, relying on God's wisdom for the remaining 90%. And when we give an offering, we are giving an above and beyond amount that God places in our hearts. So here at The Well, we have four ways to give. You can give online, mail, text, or if you're here in person, we have a joy box near the entrance of the sanctuary. All right. Well, uh, we are having Eric, he's me, bringing us the word this morning. So we are excited. <laughs> we are excited to see what God is, has placed on his heart. So let's raise our Bibles, let's raise our note-taking devices, and we'll pray over those this morning. Dear Lord, thank you so much for being able to come here. We get to worship together. We get to be in community together. Lord, as we go into the Word this morning, we want to invite you, uh, and we invite you into our homes. We want to invite you into the places that uh, may we keep to ourselves. Lord, we ask you to break down those walls, break down those barriers, and we want to hear from you, Lord. We're excited what we're going to hear today. Uh, we thank you for everything you're doing and will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we will never experience and learn from Jesus if we never let him into our home. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Yes. Or not, you can say, no, it's been terrible. That's okay. You're allowed to say that. Like, I know, oh, I, I, sorry, we have Dodger fans in the house. I'm sorry. That's... <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a Mariners fan, so it took us 14 inning, 18 innings of doing nothing just to lose, so... <laughs> If anything is more of a Mariners thing, that, that is 
Goodness gracious. But are we, are we Dodger fans? Are we mourning right now? Yes. Is it too soon to make jokes? Yes. <laughs> I just think it's cool that there's a Major League Baseball team uh, named after what I do for a living. Um, so, you know, go Padres on that. So, anyway, I thought it was funny. Aaron didn't think it was funny either. I'm sorry. Goodness gracious. Hey, I want to welcome you all. Uh, we, are, uh, we are in the second to last week of our Behind Closed Doors series. Uh, today we're talking about closets. Uh, tomorrow we're talking, and tomorrow, <laughs> you're coming back tomorrow. Uh, next Sunday uh, is going to be a really interesting one. We're talking about the living room uh, and how the living room becomes this like mod podge of just everything and really where our faith and our actual beliefs come into practice. And so we're going to talk about that next week and, you know, politics and all that fun stuff. So anyway, um, <laughs> A couple of quick things is, uh, my, our, our team kind of knows about this, but kind of not. Um, hey, I need you to bring Halloween candy next week. Halloween candy. So I'm not just asking for it for myself. Um, <laughs> but if you could bring bags of Halloween candy, we are putting together invitation boxes uh, to give out to you the 30th, so the day before Halloween, uh, to, um, to give you... Uh, it's like candy, it's like uh, Jesus coloring books for the kiddos, uh, invitation cards, all these different ways. And one of the, one of the key things is we're, we do things like community art night. We are doing things uh, like this Halloween invitation. We're doing things, uh, the, uh, the, the giving tree is coming back, uh, it's coming back up. All these ways, because in a church world, we're not just called to be good. Like, we're not just called to like, oh, let's just all be good and stay away from the bad people because they make us bad, we're just good. No, we're called to be good and we're also called to do good. Um, and so, especially since COVID, uh, there's a tendency and a hesitancy to do anything. You know, everyone still has that kind of like, oh, they coughed, like, suddenly we have to stay away from them. Um, what, what has happened within our culture has become, they have become very self, um, um, nice words, Eric. Uh, <laughs> relying on self. Um, thinking of self, which is good. We need to do that, but there's also other aspects of it. So we want to get back into to the practice of reaching out, uh, being compassionate, doing t- intentional and tangible things to show people uh, the love of Jesus. So we got, so bring candy this next week. Uh, hopefully next week or the week after, we're gonna have some important property updates for you. Uh, we did some things before the summer and we have some exciting updates coming up. Uh, so we'll give that to you guys next week. But uh, Anyway, I want to get into this, uh, talking about this, um, what it means to allow Jesus into our closets. Are you ready? How often when you invite people over, do you go, check out my closet? (laughs) If you answered that question any more than two, we need to have a conversation about boundaries. (laughs) Or stop watching Netflix murder documentaries. Um... Come to my basement. Um, anyway, is our closet, if we're honest, okay, our closet in our room, or maybe uh, for some reason in California, we have uh, some, some houses have a, a uh, coat closet for your coats, for weather. Um, but what we like to call them is our junk room, you know, like that's where we can put things where we don't have to see it. Sometimes they're seasonal. Um, sometimes uh, it, it's, it's something that we, we prefer to be unseen or unvisited, or uh, it's a place of holding, like being a holding pattern, or it can be a place of hiding. And so there's a lot of times where we allow Jesus, Jesus, I want you to influence the things that people see because they'll accept me more. But it's another thing is, Jesus, would you come into the secret dark places of my life? The places where I store things, the places where I hide things. The places where uh, things go to, uh, um, I'll fit in later uh, category. Dreams go to die in closets, right? So what I did is I actually brought part of my closet to you. Well, actually, it's all Aaron's stuff. Um, (laughs) No, I'm kidding, it's not. So this is what happens. We have our closets, and we just put random stuff in it for different reasons, for different times, and this is actually a clean closet, right? Yeah, let's, let's be honest. You know, throw that. By the way, laundry, guys, listen up. Basket, laundry, in front of it. <laughs> this is a backboard. This is not the basket. Okay, I'm glad we all. Did you write that down, Danny? Did you write down? My, you're newlywed. You need to know this. Okay, cool. All right. 
But this is what happens. When we, when we look at our closet, we have things that are seasonal. We have our, our, our winter coat collection, you know, okay? Because it might get cold one day in the morning. Um, or you, you come to the well on Sunday morning. Um, maybe you have, you have some memories. You got my Letterman's right here, all right? Should we try? We should try. We should try. We should try. Should try. Okay, you ready? Okay. It still fits. I got it uh, uh, really big when I got it um, in high school. Uh, <laughs> but you have, you have, you know, you have the good old days. You know, maybe you were a star in football, or we don't really have that kind of thing here. But uh, maybe you have something. You know, look at that CIF. Look at that CIF. I disqualified myself. Um, <laughs> But we have these memories and these thoughts, and so one of the things I want to teach you today um, as we look at scriptures, we look at things, we understand the realities of what happens here. Um, I want to teach you, this is really dumb, three ways to continue a dysfunctional closet, okay? Because no one wants to clean their closet. No one wants to clean their garage. No one wants to deal with this stuff. Why? Because we have hidden hurt here. Because there are things that we we prefer people not have to, to deal with and look at. Every little thing here I brought here has a story. Maybe you like to hide your hurt where no one can see it. That's why I stuff it away. Because I thought if I put it away, maybe someone else will take care of it. Maybe there's unmet expectations. I I, I love um, growing up, um, I have three brothers, and at one point, uh, one of the houses that we lived in, all four of us shared one room, um, and one closet, and my mom said, go clean the room, and so we, we did. Um, she didn't say closet, she said room. <laughs> Details matter. Um, so we stuffed the entire closet, stuffed it to the brim. Like, it was like a sliding glass door, and shut it just, you know, like you're like trying to shove in and like not crush your hand at the same time, but you need to like pull it out to, it shut completely, like, and look at that. But all my mom had to do was just, just literally like barely open the, the glass door and it just comes pouring out. And so what happens is we stuff our emotions and our thoughts and our fears and our anguish and our anxiety. And then one thing happens, one thing goes wrong, whether it's a pop tire or they mess up your order at Starbucks and suddenly you are blaring out anger and frustration and start hurting other people because we stuff things in our closet. And sometimes it doesn't have to be bad. It, may, it doesn't have to be trauma. Maybe it's, maybe it's expectations that you have to carry. You guys ready for this? Okay. My favorite suit, I bought at Costco, by the way. Love this, okay? Right? Notice I didn't offer to try this one on. <laughs> it's a sports coat now. Anyway, um, when I began pastoring, this was the expectation put on me. And what, what's happened is, so you have this expectation of, of, you don't dress up enough. Then, I've got my holy jeans. So I want to be modern and hip and cool. These don't fit me either anymore, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> but they do go together. Anyway, um, <laughs> Pastor, you're, you're dressing too casual. You're not enough, too much, too little, too much, too little, like the back and forth. By the way, we're gonna get a little vulnerable here. So what we do is we take these expectations. You may have different expectations. Maybe you're terrified of your mother-in-law because she's gonna criticize every little thing you do. Maybe you're, you're, you're concerned of, of, of a brother, maybe concerned of a, of a friend who's gonna criticize the way that you're raising your kids or the way that you're working or the way that you keep your house or don't keep your house or the way that you should be um, praying or not praying or whatever you fill in the gap. There are expectations and so instead of dealing with them, we just shove them into the closet. We assume it's gonna get, what about, what about goals and dreams? I'm gonna work out. Got these at Target. January 1st, we got new goals, new me, right? New year, new me. Let's do this. Yes, these are eight-pounders. These are errands. Um, <laughs> but what happens January 14th? 
They go in the closet. It's the avoided workout equipment. Maybe it's that tennis racket, the hiking boots, the dream that you thought maybe this year I'm going to live differently. This year I'm going to be more active. This year I'm going to do this. This year I'm going to pour into my relationships. But because things get hard, things get inconvenient, or things just get busy, we stuff it into a closet. How about these? I, grew, uh, I played ice hockey as a kid, love ice skating, love playing ice hockey, but I didn't, didn't for a long time, and then my wife graciously in 2019 bought these for me at Christmas time, because I wanted them. <laughs> Used them once or twice, hold on, once or twice, then playing on the church softball league, I dislocated my right knee. <laughs> then COVID happened. You know why I haven't worn these? I'm afraid I'm going to hurt my knees. And because it's something I'm afraid of, they've been in my closet. It's almost Christmas 2022. Or maybe you have seasonal faith. And so when you need Jesus, you go into your closet and you get out your, your cold jacket. Maybe you pull out a scarf and then, you know, you get your, your, your fancy hat. Because, baby, it's cold outside and I need Jesus because I'm hurting now. But, hey, Jesus, you, you healed me, you rescued me, you, you set me, you know, you, you figured some things out. But, hey, go, thanks, Jesus. It was so good to see you. Same time next year, same time next dysfunction. Okay, thank you, and you go in the closet. Your faith is something you go to when you need it, not that it's a daily part of who you are. Or things get inconvenient, things get difficult, and, or even things get great. There's two ways that you step away from um, and create seasonal faith, by the way. Either things get difficult, then you need him, or things are like great, and then you want to praise him. Oh, God, you are so good. Every, I'm getting everything I want. God is so good. You know that there's so much more in waiting in our faith than there is receiving? That's why I love, you know, that song that Jessica led us in is, even when it doesn't feel like you're working, you're working. So whether in good or hard season, we always have this closet that we kind of stuff into. But this is a good thing. You guys know what a closet's for? A closet. What is it for? To store stuff. Is it wrong to store stuff? No. No. It's good. And so a closet has, so if you're thinking you shouldn't have a closet, you should hide nothing from people or God. No, that's, that's, we need boundaries. Um, (laughs) is you're supposed to have a closet. You're supposed to have these places in the room, but when you allow Jesus into your closet, they begin to have purpose. Because not everything is supposed to be out all the time. There is time for seasonals. There are times for barriers. So I want you to write this one down. Number one is prioritize your pain. Have you ever had to do this in your closet? (laughs) Right? And what do you begin to do? Keep... Easter 2021, still with the tag. All right. Hey, discard. Keep. No, no, I love that shirt. That's a good shirt right there. Then you start what you do. You start sorting through your pain. What you do is you take the chaos and you give it rhythms and reasons. You cannot ignore the chaos. There's some of you in this room who you're thinking, only when things calm down will I begin to, to have life figured out. You're going to wait a whole long time because there's no, there's no part of life where it's not chaotic, especially when you ignore it. You're only going to find rhythms and purpose is when you, when you prioritize your pain. You lean into the pain. You lean into these things that are causing you fear and frustration and anxiety as you, you take the chaos and in order to gain understanding, you begin to sort through it. This is why you know, even daily devotions that in the spiritual sense begin to sort through, allow God's voice into your heart, into your mind. This is why doing things like Emmaus Road Counseling, sitting down with a professional counselor and going, here's all my junk. 
Can you help me sort through it? You know, when we verbalize our pain, it deroots trauma. It uproots it. And checks out Ephesians uh, chapter four. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put a slander be put away from you, um, along with all the malice. That bitterness you're holding on to. If you want to hear from the Lord right now, He's saying, "Don't hold on to it." If you're holding on to wrath and anger, I can tell you right now, the Lord's saying it, that it's time to let it go. Now, not let it go in the sense of sing about it in a little song, but let it go in the sense of let's actually sort through it and process it. There are some things you're gonna have to give away. It doesn't fit you anymore. There's gonna be some things that that were put upon you. Maybe someone put something in your closet with the expectation that this is what you're supposed to be and maybe you've gotta go, sorry, is this for somebody else? But to put away those things 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7 says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God so that, the, that the, at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. This is a good thing. It's like, what, what's the lady on Netflix name? Who, that one. Um, you are at times gonna have to ask for help to take care of the things you can't do on your own. This is one of the things I, I tell people all the time, anytime I do pastoral care, is every person in this room, if you're a person, raise your hand. Just checking, okay. <laughs> every person needs a doctor. Someone who can give you a physical, who can check your heart, who can check your lung capacity. Every person in this room needs a doctor. Every person here needs a counselor. Now, there may be seasonal, well, there's more than the other. But you need someone to help you process through your emotional uh, hurts, pains, hangups, or just things through life. And then you also need, you need a pastor, someone who can spiritually advise you. Now, I am not saying that has to be me. Your small group leader is a shepherd. Your person that you're you're in Bible study with can be a shepherd, can be a pastor to help you through and just check on you. Hey, how are you doing with the Lord? How are you, are you prioritizing being kind to people or are you being, are you prioritizing yourself? We need those spiritual shepherds in our life to help uh, help us process these things going on. Number two, hope of growth. This one's hard. This one's hard because, uh, you know, sorting through your pain, you know, there are people out there who can help you and things like this. This one I think is actually harder than um, sorting through your pain. Um, those weights in your closet, those ice skates, that super cool Nike outfit you bought because it was super cute and you're gonna look great running in it. All those things, if an interest peaked for your personal growth, you need to go back to that. Don't be discouraged by not seeing results. This is, you're like, this, Eric, this doesn't sound very spiritual. Proverbs 13, 4, lazy people want much but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. Gosh, don't you just wish you could take your permanent marker and go, no! Nope. <laughs> lazy people will prosper. <laughs> America. You know, like, <laughs> lazy people want much but get little. I'm not trying to put any judgment on anyone but myself here. At the end of the day, there may be an interest that's put on your heart. This is why I, one th- I, I just, I admire Nicole Colombo right here so much. She's getting ready to walk how many miles? 60, 60 miles. Okay. <laughs> By choice. <laughs> Important detail. Because there's a cause that she believes in and she's disciplining herself. She is working hard. Now, Prosper, is she gonna get a million dollar check at the end of that 60 walk, 60 mile walk? No. <laughs> I wish, right? And we're all gonna go for a 60 mile. No, we wouldn't even do that. Even if we got a million dollars, some of us would go, nah, <laughs> right? But Prosper means different than, and more than just financial. Prosper means to accomplish. Prosper means to grow. Prosper means to accomplish something that you didn't think was possible. And so can I encourage you? I, and I, I'm not reading anyone's mail. I haven't been in anyone's closet. I've been in her closet. Um, 
but there may be something physically, metaphorically, that you have put away out of fear that you would not prosper. And I believe the Lord is saying, go back after it. Imagine what would, what would happen if we say, Lord, we, I know that you're with me and that you give me dreams and passions placed in my life for a reason. I want to do this with you. Now, there's some things in your closet that are maybe dreams, passion. They're just distractions, and you need to give them to goodwill. Okay? There, there, there may be things. Maybe it's that ex-boyfriend sweater you still have. Get rid of it. Okay? Maybe at the end, and this is going, I don't mean this to sound harsh in any way, shape, or form. Men, ladies, please forgive me. Understand my heart. But that dress, that suit, may never fit again. And it's not a, 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 a hit against your character or who you are. It's just life, we grow and we change and our bodies change and we're in a new season of life. And what happens is we can get so consumed with what, let's go this way, what was, we we're never able to grasp on on what's ahead of us. And God has called us to go into all the world. And some of us, we're still holding on to old belief systems. Some of us are still holding on to old, uh, old hurt that needs to be healed now. The God is saying, I've called you to go. And there are things that you're gonna have to let, you're gonna have to just drop to the ground, tie up in a, in a bag and send it off for someone else to enjoy. Again, not trying to sound harsh. But there is, a, when you have a hope for growth, that means you have to embrace some things and reject other things. We doing all right? Okay, here's the one that really matters. All these matter, but this one for me matters. So one of the things I told you about creating a dysfunctional space is that we, we create this to be, a, your closet is a place of seasonal faith. What if we turned our closets into a place of prayer and communion with God? What if we turned our closets to places where we keep our unseen, unwanted, un, un, you fill in the blank, and instead of saying, God, I want to keep this separate from you, Lord, I want to invite you into my mess. I want to invite you into the deepest, darkest place of, of my life. Some of you have got secrets in your closet that you, you, would, you would not ever want anyone to find out. What if you asked Jesus to come hang out with you there? What if you invited Jesus into the place that you don't want him to be? I love this in Matthew 6. Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray, where to pray, the, the heart of prayer. And, he's, and it's funny, he says, don't be like the religious people. Be with me. He says, when you pray, he says, you must not be like the hypocrites. He's talking about the religious people, not the sinners on the street. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners and that they may be seen by others, a public faith. Truly I say to you that they have received their reward. But when you pray, talking to believers and followers of Jesus, first to his disciples and now to you, but when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who's in secret. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now this can literally be your closet at home. Great, take it literally, fantastic. But the heart of what Jesus is saying is that God does not need your public faith life. He desires your private one. And when your private faith life is rich, your public one, you don't have to try. You're not trying to be seen, you're just trying to love. This is where we talk about discover, encounter, and display the love of Jesus. We do not say we are called to display the love of Jesus. No, we're called to discover it. Encounter it, wrestle with it in the deep, secret places. And it will naturally display. Amen. Our temptation is to go, I know Jesus, let's tell everyone about him. But then when the storm comes, this, it just falls apart. And this is, this is hard. And Jessica and Paul, you guys can come up. Because we, over the past two years, we were forced into our closet. And we didn't know what to do. Some of us, we just tried a bunch of things on. 
Some of us sat in the corner and cried. Some of us just got lost and, and forgot what was important. Sometimes we get to this place where we are where we, exactly where we don't want to be and Jesus is saying, I got you where you need to be. Would you spend time with me? Would you, would you talk with me? What I want us to do, I, I want us to apply what we're talking about. Um, I asked Jessica and Paul to, to lead us in a kind of an oldie but a goodie song. Um, but I want us to just focus on Jesus. And then after that, I have a really practical thing for you to do. Like, crazy practical thing for you to do. It may be the easiest thing I've ever asked you to do or encouraged you to do or invited you to do. But what I want you to do is I want you to stand. And the goal in this is to practice going after Jesus in our secret places. Is to, is to practice to invite the Holy Spirit into these secret moments. I want to read this psalm over to you. So if you can just go ahead and just close your eyes. Nothing weird. No one's doing anything behind you. Nothing is just, I just to focus to hear this psalm read over you. Then as we worship together, would you mentally, emotionally, spiritually just focus on who Jesus is? Respond to the psalm in your own way and just come after him. Psalm 34 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. If you're feeling helpless in here this morning, would you take heart that Jesus is with you? The Holy Spirit is present. says, come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Come on, if you're afraid in here, this is your time to go into that secret place with Jesus. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed. And guess what? The Lord listened. He saved me from my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. And in this moment, Jesus, we just want to take refuge in him. There's some scary stuff in our closets. We just want to take refuge in him. We want to seek you. We want to know you. So Lord, lead us in that, even this moment, as we practice seeking after you in our secret places. Let's just take this moment, just worship Jesus. Be present with him. He's present with us right now. Don't rush this moment. Don't think of the picnic. Don't think of who's next to you. Just seek after Jesus. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness, you are there. In the secret, in the quiet
this is a very real reality. No great sermon, no wonderful flyer, no cool illustration, nothing will transform you, nothing will change your life except for Jesus. It is he and he alone that brings transformation. So the, my prayer for you is I, I'm going to challenge you for it to be a prayer for you, for yourself. Uh, if you have a phone, a smartphone or a, a, a flip phone or whatever a phone, just go and pull it out. Pull out your phone. Pull it out. I'm going to try something first. Okay, everyone got your phone out? Don't act like it wasn't already out. You're like, I don't know where it is. <laughs> I should say, switch your app now. I'm going to try something first. Okay? I'm going to say, hey, Siri. I'm going to try it. Yeah. Hey, Siri, set an alarm for 3 p.m. every day. Did any of it work for anyone? I was just testing. Yes, no? Okay, maybe. Okay, that's what I want you to do. I want you to set an alarm Monday through Friday for 3 p.m. Just set an alarm, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. It worked for Michaela. Maybe there's a lot more Android people, in, you know, in here than we thought. And if that's the case, you know, we'll have our altar call. Um, <laughs> you got it, you got it, you got it. Okay. Set an alarm for 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. And this is what I want you to do. Every time it goes off, I, I'm a person with my phone. I don't like, it's always on silent. I hate sudden loud noises. And so it just, it, it vibrates at three. Uh, 3 p.m., I want you to take three minutes. If you're driving, pull over. If you're with your kids, include them. If you're at work, go to the bathroom. Okay? For three minutes, at 3 p.m., this is what I want you to pray. Jesus, I want to know you. That's it. No Lord's Prayer, no anything else. Just And you're going to be tempted, if you're really spiritual, to go, Jesus, I want you to know you more, and I want this, 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 and that. No, 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 no. Jesus, I want to know you. You can repeat that. We can spend the next a minute and 50 seconds, two minutes and 50 seconds, just listen, being present with Jesus. This is, this is my belief as we pray through what does post-COVID look like? What does America post-Christianity look like? What does um, you fill in the blank and what it is good? This is what it needs to look like. Followers of Jesus. And if you, maybe you're not a follower of Jesus in here today, but you're curious. Would you just pray that prayer? Jesus, I want to know you. And I'm convinced when we learn to, to shut everything else out and actually focus on him, we're going to begin to hear things. We're going to begin to see signs and wonders. We're going to begin to see that situation that you thought you could never walk away from, something you've got the courage to walk away from. That addiction that just keeps slapping you in the face, I believe that as we pray that we would know Jesus more, you would find that, that, that you're not going to be slapped. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Why is his name this beautiful? So, can we do this? 3 p.m., Monday through Friday. Just pray three minutes. Jesus, I want you to know. So, Lord, in this moment, if you, you've came with someone, you want to hold their hand, or you, you're good with bridging the aisles, or go ahead and hold someone's hand here. And if you've never come to know Jesus and you, you're, you want to discover him or you want to have questions, uh, go in our cafe. We have um, some people there, or there's a card in front of you that says yes on it. Go ahead and fill that out, drop in the joy box, or give it to, to someone at that table, and that way we can we help you through this process. But right now, Lord, we want to we want to just take this moment. It's more it's more fun and more convenient to just talk about the, the surface level things, but Lord, we, we want you in the deep things. God, there's marriages in this room right now that just need to know you more. They need to know what it's like follow you. Lord, there, there's, there's singles in this room who just need uh, to know what it means to just follow you. There's men that need to just know you more. There's women in this room that just need to know you more. And Lord, we want to align our hearts to you. And so Lord, would you speak to us? Lord, would you speak to us in our closets? 
our secret deep places. Lord, I pray favor and blessing upon every single person in this room that they would experience the favor of the Lord and the favor of the Jubilee year which we are experiencing right now because of your goodness. We are in that age. And so, Lord, I pray if there's a hostile situation going on right now in homes, Lord, would you bring be the Prince of Peace in that home right now as we get to know you more at 3 p.m. every single day, Lord, that we get to know you more, that we are able to be you more and more, not through some... Uh, superficial message or some superficial podcast or, or a book we read once. No, because of your presence. So the Holy Spirit, would you fill us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet that we may experience your goodness, that we may cultivate your fruit as we know you more. We praise you and we thank you in the precious name of Jesus. We all said, amen. Come on, let's give him praise. We will see you at the picnic Bring some food, uh, community R&I, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll see you real soon.